Hello everyone, it is Catherine B. Holmes. Welcome to another edition of Online Art Class. I miss everybody and I can't wait to see you. I have a special surprise for you today. We are going to be doing paint brush splatter. This is the lesson you've been waiting for. Not only are we going to be splattering stuff with paint, but we're also going to be drawing paint brushes, which is going to be a really awesome outcome. Just wait and see. We're going to start off with white paper and a Sharpie marker if you have one. Permanent marker works better than a water-based marker for this because we are going to eventually be adding some paint to it. And when paint touches a water-based marker, it, it will cause the marker to bleed and sort of blend, and we don't necessarily want that. So to start off, we're going to draw a paintbrush. So over here in this corner, there's tons of different kinds of paintbrushes. I bet you have some in your garage or in your basement. I'm going to start off with a rectangle. That'll be the metal part. I'll come on down with a handle for our paintbrush. And I'll make a little circle in here. That's gonna be the handle, uh, the hole that the handle hangs up on. And then of course, the bristles. So we can some make some long lines that are going in the same direction for the bristles. And maybe a little design around the metal part. It's up to you. That's one kind of brush. Then we could do a fine paint brush. This is what we use in art class a lot, where it's got this long skinny rectangle. It's a little bit thicker down towards the bottom, a little thinner here. And we have a long skinny, skinny handle if you can't make a straight line, you can use a ruler if you want to, but don't be caught up in making straight lines. That's not really important. This is going to be a somewhat abstract piece of art anyway. And there we have the bristles for that. Next, let's do a big brush. Let's see, our bristles will be about that long, I think. Another rectangle. This is the metal part of the brush again. Sometimes they have those little relief stripey designs on them. You could even put a word there if you want to, as if it's a brand. The wooden handle. Try and make it symmetrical, the same on both sides. But then again, don't get caught up in that. It's not hugely important. Also, if you want to make a wood grain pattern on it, you could do that to make it look like there's a wooden pattern. I'm just going, making some lines, maybe a knot in the wood. And we'll go ahead and throw our bristles up here too. A few more. We want to make it look somewhat realistic. We don't want any white spaces in there. Next brush is a fan brush. This is one that artists use. I don't love it because it doesn't have, allow for a lot of control. But some people love to make fur with this kind of brush. We call it a fan brush because it is fanned out. Again, we'll put the metal part down there and a long handle going off the page. And do a few more. Let's just fill up that space. This will be another wooden one going off the page. bristles, just quick straight lines is all you need. And then maybe, oh yeah, don't forget that little stripey pattern. Wood if you want to, just some zigzags. And then I'll do another final artist's brush over here. Now we've got the drawing done. Pretty much just lines couple little patterns involved. So now we're going to put a little shadow on there. I will be using some charcoal to make a slight shadow to make it look like it's three-dimensional, but you can use the edge of a pencil. And I'm just going to trace the edge. This is called the contour side. I made a little thick line there, but now I'm going to blend it with my finger to make it look like there's a shadow. That gives it a little extra kick. Little extra zhuzh, I like to call it. 
so it stands out from the paper. Like perhaps this is actually a real paintbrush laying on a piece of paper. It gets a little tricky with the skinnier brushes, so I'm not gonna blend this with my finger. I might blend over my brush too much, so we'll just put a little line there. And notice I'm putting my line on the same side. I'm putting them on the left or on the top for each one. so it won't confuse the light source. We wanna make sure we have a light source that's coming in all the same direction. So once we have our shadows, now's the fun part. We're gonna add a little bit of color. So I have prepared myself a tray of rainbow colors here. These are liquid watercolor, but any kind of watercolor will do. Uh, the pan watercolors are fine. If you don't have watercolor, marker will work. A water-based marker, marker works with this you can just draw and then paint over your marker with water and it acts like paint it's a really cool trick so I'm going to start off with gosh I think that's red did I put these in order maybe not I'm going to take a little bit of red on my brush and put a little on my paper so it looks like there's some red paint coming from that rinse it off don't drink it it's not kool-aid a little teeny bit of orange here on this one doesn't look too different from the red. Rinse it off. A little bit of yellow. For my next one. Green is up next. Is this green? Let's hope so. A little bit of blue for my next one. And then finally, a little bit of purple so we have all the colors of the rainbow so now here comes the splatter part i was telling you about the fun part now this looks pretty cool as is but the next thing we're going to do is make some splatter take your clean brush i've just cleaned it off dip it into a color you don't have to dip it in completely but get the end of it pretty decently covered with paint I'm gonna put my hand here and I'm gonna tap it. And then that's going to stop my brush in midair and it's gonna have some spray happen. Doesn't matter where it goes, we're having fun with it. Ready? Splatter. Boom, 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 boom. All right, that's good with green. Next. Oops, I'm getting it on the table, but that's okay. It's all right. A little bit of blue. Just a little bit on the end. Then we're tapping it. Nice. Got a couple big drops there. That makes it look even better. Got some cool colors there. I want to put some warm colors in. So I'll take some orange. Oh, nice. I'm loving this. Look at that. It is okay, people at home. On a nice day, you can do this outside if you're worried about getting anything covered with paint. But it is somewhat controlled when you're going like this as opposed to just whipping it and flipping it. It's, it's controlled, it kind of stays in an area if you just give it little, little taps like that. A little bit of yellow, a couple little taps, tap, tap, tap. It's not going everywhere, it's controlled. You might wanna put a piece of under paper down just to protect your table or your surface. But check it out, how much fun is this? I love it, purple. And then don't forget to sign your name. I always wait until the artwork is done. Sorry about that, my phone just fell. I rigged up this system with a broom where I'm trying, I don't have a tripod, so this is what I'm dealing with, sorry. Anyway, sign your name, Mrs. Holmes. And voila, we have a gorgeous, simple, under 10 minute drawing of paintbrush splatter. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you enjoy even more doing this yourself. Have fun with it. Don't worry about the mess, but make sure you clean up afterwards if you do make one. It was great being with you all today. I hope you join me again for the next installment of Online Art Class with me. I'll see you soon. Stay safe. Bye-bye.